Let's stay with this story. Joining us live now from New York is Phelim Kine, who's the Deputy Director at Human Rights Watch's Asia Division. Welcome to the programme and thanks for being with us. Uh, is this just another outlandish mm -hmm. statement by uh, President Duterte or do you fear he will actually follow through on this? Well, I think the key takeaway from this is that the lessons of the first three months of the Duterte administration in the Philippines is that we absolutely cannot underestimate his capacity for mass unlawful violence. He ran on a campaign promising mass extrajudicial violence against criminal suspects, that he would fill Manila Bay with the bodies of thousands of criminal criminals that he would execute. In the first three months of his administration, almost 3,000 people have been killed by either his police or by unknown, unidentified gunmen. And his government, he is applauding this. He's cheerleading this and inciting more deaths. So this latest statement, we cannot take it lightly. The potential for more mass killings are almost guaranteed unless there is concerted international pressure in the Philippines to bring this to a stop. But who is President Duterte likely to listen to? We already know that he's insulted uh, President Obama, he's insulted the UN, he's insulted the EU. He said he's not going to carry on with uh, military cooperation in terms of military exercises with the US for, from after next year. Who is he going to listen to? Well, President Duterte, his, his sort of aggressive, bellicose, outlandish rhetoric is part of his trademark. But what has not been applied by key bilateral donors, number one, the United States, which is a key funder for the security forces and for the police, as well as the European Union, they have skin in this game. They are potentially underwriting units which are engaging in potentially unlawful killings. So those governments in Washington, D.C., in Brussels, they need to make clear to the Duterte government, you need to stop this unlawful, violent course of action, or we're turning off the taps on our aid to your security forces. That is the type of approach that has not been taken yet, and that will get the attention of the Duterte government. There's no doubt the Philippines does have a huge drugs problem. Is part of the problem, though, that many in the Philippines, so fed up uh, with the issue of uh, drug crime, actually back his strategy, they back what he's doing. That's why he was elected. Actually, if you take a look at, this, at the statistics, the Philippines has a, a drug problem that is similar in some ways to that of the United Kingdom or to Australia or to parts of the United States. Um, and I think that the, the key issue here is that there is, within the 38% of the population that voted, who voted for President Duterte, within that 38%, there are very enthusiastic supporters of President Duterte. But the fact is, 62% of the population didn't vote for President Duterte. And you can see growing signs that there's a growing sense of absolute dismay in the Philippines at what is being done in the name of them, the taxpayer, in the name of them, the Philippine government. And the fact is that we haven't seen organized mass opposition to this because there is, frankly, a state of fear in the Philippines now. Anyone who stands up to challenge the president on this extrajudicial campaign of killing, for example, Senator Leila de Lima, ha are, are being politically crucified, vilified, marginalized, and victimized. So it's a very difficult situation for people who oppose President Duterte in the Philippines. Philem Kai, must leave it there. Appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.